Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation called Radiation Induced Degradation of LISA Photoreceivers. My name is Paul Colcombe and I am a PhD student working at l'Observatoire de la Côte d'Azur and the French Aerospace Lab, ONERA. So I will start my talk with a quick introduction, then presenting the different setup and measurements that we are performing on the QPD and QPR before and after our irradiation campaign. The following part will be more detailed about this uh, irradiation campaign, and I will finish my talk with a small conclusion. So during its mission, LISA will be subject to different sources of radiation. So they're mainly coming from the sun with uh, solar wind and solar flares. These sources emit energetic particles like proton, proton that will uh, collide and interact with the atoms of the photoreceiver, causing either its ease, the ionization or displacement of the atom and therefore it will change the optical and electrical properties and changing the causing temporary or permanent damage, or at least degradation in the performance. So our goal here is to evaluate and quantify this degradation. And to do so, so we are comparing the result of pre-radiation measurement and post-irradiation measurement. So here we are focusing our study on permanent damage caused by atomic displacement damage on the in-gas quadrant photodiode and the effect of this irradiation on the performance of the QPR. So the QPR is composed of two parts, the quadrant in-gas photodiode and the front end electronics. Here is a presentation of the different components. So we have the different QPD, once coming from Japan, made by Amamatsu and bought by JAXA. A second one is the Netherlands, is coming from the Netherlands, made by Nikef and Sron. There are two candidates for LISA uh, to be the future LISA QPD. We have a third here coming from the US, uh, not candidates, they are used here as a reference and mainly to complete our data obtained with Japanese and Netherlands QPDs and it will also improve our result and our understanding of the degradation of in-gas QPDs. The second part of the, which is the front end electronics, are made by, uh, in Germany by the Albert Einstein Institute. So the first measurement done on the QPD, uh, dark current and capacitance measurement, AVCV. So the AVs measurement, dark current, we are performing a voltage sweep over all segment of the QPD. And we are reading the in output the, the current of coming from every QPD, every segment, sorry. So the sweep will change a little bit depending on the, on the QPD, but the main point, an important point is the dependence of the temperature. IV dark current is as a strong dependence with temperature. So here we're using this setup to be able to control precisely the temperature. We are doing different measurement at different temperatures between 15 and 50 degrees. For the, QP, for the capacitance measurement, we are doing a similar sweep in voltage, but this time only on one second. We also have a a control of temperature, but we noticed that it didn't affect much the capacitance result. So we only do this measurement at 20 degrees. We also perform a frequency sweep that allow us to, to do a uh, measurement in different condition. The second setup is a noise and bandwidth setup. So we are performing its use of white light source method. So there is two measurements, one in dark and one in light. And thanks to these two measurements, we are able to take out uh, the noise of the photoreceiver and also the transipedance gain, which gives us the bandwidth. Here, we suppress the influence coming from the bench 
because they have the, the instrument at their own noise and own gains that we are also measuring during the experiment. So we are doing a noise flow measurement to that we subtract at the end to the final result to only get the noise coming from the cupola. The last measurement is the optical bench. And here we try to replicate the flight condition of Lisa and measure and use the cupola in this condition. So we are using an intensity modulator to reproduce the interferometer output over the cupid. So we are measuring, we are doing the measurement only on one segment at a time, and we are performing three type of uh, result. So first one, AC and DC gain. And the last one is crosstalk, which uh, allow us to look how the every channel is influencing the other one. And yeah, so once we have finished with all uh, the different measurement, we are able now to do the irritation campaign. So there's two main parameters. The first one is the energy, here 20 MeV and 60 MeV. This corresponds to the minimum and the maximum of the energy we can have with the beam. We can go to lower uh, energy with uh, the here, but uh, it will cost come with a cost of the quality of the beam. And the second parameter is the fluence. Here is the equivalent fluence to calculate things to a software called Omer, and based on the real fluence, I mean, on the fluence or supposed fluence, cumulative fluence that will Lisa will receive during its full mission. This uh, data is provided by uh, Lisa Consensus, and we made our calculation based on that. We finished the first irradiation to a uh, fluence that is four times the first one. So we can have, uh, we're going a little bit more higher than the just uh, degradations that will, Lisa will support. But we actually, we go much far away because we, wanted to also to see the full degradation of the photoreceivers. So we, on the second irradiation, we are going to a much higher uh, fluence. We could not, due to time, uh, we could not perform the two same fluence for the two same energy. But also an important point is that we don't do this irradiation at once. We're doing in multiple steps. So, and doing each step. So, after each fluent step, we are doing in situ measurement to where we measure the IDCV and noise, the cupola, allowing us to have a, a, a more free degradation of the photo receiver depending in function of the fluence. So, here is the facility that we will use. It's based in Nice, in France, at the Antoine Lacassagne Centre. It's a center mainly used, they have a, so a cyclotron and called Medic. This one is mainly used for the medical purposes, but they develop, they did a lot of work to be able to develop a new line ded dedicated to scientific research and adapted to space complements irradiation. So on the, here you have a schematic of the line and on the right you have more information about uh, the beam itself. So to conclude this presentation, we have, uh, so far we have done the irradiation plan. We have uh, the measurement and we have the bench calibrated. We receive the component and we have the proton irradiation condition confirmed. Actually, we already start the pre-radiation measurement because we finished the IVCV and noise measurement. And these results are comparable to other centers uh, coming from Nikkev, JAXA, Amamatsu, and Albert Einstein Institute. Actually, there's two presentations who detail more about this result here. And we actually 
currently doing finishing the optical pre-radiation measurement, and we hope to finish them before the irradiation campaign plan in September 2022. Well, thank you for following this uh, presentation, and I wish you a good uh, day. Thank you very much.